Please find Mark chapter 2, verse 11 through 12. Mark chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. And Jesus is speaking in this verse. It's a story. We'll talk more about it later. The story is Jesus went to preach and teach. And the place was packed with people. I mean, so much so you couldn't get in. And there was a group of four, and then they had a friend, uh, a man who was laid up, paralyzed, sick of the palsy. So these four friends brought the guy forth, brought him to Jesus. But they couldn't get in by the door. or the window, is they were stuck. So what were they gonna do? So they climbed up on top of the house and they tore apart the roof and they lowered the guy down. So we'll find out more later, but that's the basic part of the story. So. And it says, I, meaning Jesus, I say unto thee, this one person, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way. Into thine house. And immediately. This man, he arose and took up his bed and went forth before them all. They're all watching. In so much that they were all amazed. And glorified God. meaning that they gave the glory to God. They praised him for what had happened, saying, we never saw it on this fashion. What does that mean? Saw it on this fashion. What does that phrase mean? It means, I've never seen that before. Wow. Never seen that before. Amazing story. It's a true story. True story. Who healed this guy? Jesus did. How did he do it? He just told him. Arise, take up thy bed, go thy way. And then that's what happened. Perhaps if the guy had refused, he would still be he would have been stuck there. And he never would have known what, what could have happened to him. But Jesus commanded him, arise, take up thy bed, and go to your home. So just imagine if that were you, laid up, and all these people watching you, and one man there who tells you, arise. Your bed, pick it up. Go home. So imagine. You know, everybody's standing over this guy, looking at him. You know, and he's there laying in the middle of all this mass of people. You know, he, maybe he was embarrassed or, you know.
So what if he would have thought in his head, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed. What if I try and fail? What if I can't do it? Take up my bed. You take up my bed. <laughs> Somebody else, or I mean, I mean uh, there's four friends. Tell them to get my bed. But thank God that this man had faith. And we're going to see it. Imagine if this man had thought, uh, and who are you? Who are you to tell me to stand up? Uh, can't you see I'm stuck here? Hello? Take my bed up. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> but no, that's not what happened. This man was full of faith. And he just said, okay. And he stood up. And he picked up his bed. And he went on his way. Praise the Lord. Let's read some more. It says, And he entered into Capernaum and did many things that day. And word spread abroad. And immediately people gathered at this house. So there was no place to enter in. Not through the door. And Jesus preached. And there was one man who was sick of the palsy. And Jesus saw, saw their faith. And Jesus said to the sick, the sick of the palsy, Son, your sins be forgiven thee. And immediately rose he took up his bed before them all, and so much they were all amazed and glorified. Get, uh, I'm lost about where he's at. And in the spirit, they reasoned that which is easier to tell the sick? Thy. To know that the Son of God hath power on earth to forgive sin. He said to the sick, Rise, take up thy bed, and go thy way. And immediately he arose and took up his bed. And all were amazed and praised God. Because they had never seen it that way before. Okay. It's okay. So God made heaven and earth in six days. He made everything. And it was good. It was very good. And he made everything perfect. But then sin entered into the world. And it passed upon all. Because Adam and Eve, through their sin, we are separated from God. And ex will experience death and separation. And women will experience pain and travail in, in childbirth. And by the sweat of our brow, we will struggle and, and as we work. 
Adam and Eve, the first couple, through them, the sin has passed upon all. But God loved the world so much that he gave us his only son, that whosoever believeth in him should not die and go to hell, but will have everlasting life. God is not willing that any should perish. He wants all to be repent. There is only one Savior, and he is willing to save us. And he's the only one who can heal us. Do you have faith? Maybe some of you have faith in doctors or nurses, medicine. You have faith in the government, perhaps. And some have faith, you know, in nature? Chairs. The chairs, sorry. Sometimes we have problems with sin. And sometimes some sicknesses are because of sin. So we need to be willing to trust him. Are you willing to repent? This story shows something about Jesus. And it shows us that sin is a sickness. Notice, first of all, Jesus saw their faith. In verse 5, it says, And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Their faith. Whose faith? Who's there? Whose faith? These four friends or the one guy? So it's clear that any person that there were four friends there that were full of faith. How do we know? Well, because they they broke apart the roof to bring their friend to Jesus. So it's clear that they had faith. It was so easy to see it. But this man who was sick of the palsy, Jesus saw his faith as well. The four, yes, it's clear that they had faith. But Jesus looked on the one And he knew he had faith as well. So you and I, we can't see a person's heart. But God can. We can't, I can't see your hearts. You can't see each other's. You know, and it's true too that Satan and angels cannot see your heart but God can so be careful we're so quick to judge sometimes we're so quick to think oh I know what's in your heart be careful with that because God knows God knows that we truly don't know also the Bible warns that your heart my heart I can't even know my own heart You can't even know your own heart. Why? Because your heart will deceive you. The Bible warns us of this. So I'm going to do this for the right reason, you think. Hang on a second. Maybe your heart is lying to you. So be careful. Say, God, um, I think that this thing over here, I think I should do it, but, you know, I I don't want to trust my heart. I want to trust you. So please help me to know 
what's the right decision here? What should I do? So it's good to pray. It's good to ask for counsel and advice and say, hey, what do you think about this situation? There's these different things. There's all these facts. There's this thing over here. What ought, what ought I do about it? So ask for wise counsel. Ask wise people. So what do you think? For example, me, I, you know, me and my wife, we're having problems. Um, so I don't know. What do you think we ought to do about it? What, what should I do about it? Um, she's, you know, going to church. She's grumpy all the time. She's, I mean, I don't know what to do. Ask. It's so important to get some help. So be careful. We can't see the heart, but the Lord can. And Jesus, he said, I forgive your sins. So please notice, the first thing, what did Jesus do? He saw their faith, and he forgave their sins. He forgave his sins. The man was sick. But Jesus didn't heal him first. First he said, your sins, I forgive them. So maybe this man, maybe, maybe, maybe he was sick because of the sins. Maybe yes, maybe no. I mean, I don't know. But he was sick. But Jesus put that aside for a minute. And he looked at the heart. It was more important about what was going on in his heart. Your heart, your soul is, is more important than your body. Your soul needs forgiving, cleansing, right? So my question is, do you believe that? Do you believe the soul is more important than the body? If so... Is your life showing it? Is your life proving that? For example, in the morning, you get ready to go. How much time do you use to take care of your body? And how much time do you use to take care of your soul? You know, for example, man wakes up in the morning you know, combs his one hair, fixes it just right. <laughs> Tries to make it look like more than what it is. How much time y'all spend doing your hair, right? And then, uh oh, it's too late to, uh, gotta go, gotta go. And don't spend any time in the Bible. You should take care of your soul, right? And your body. But which is more important? Your soul. The Bible says, or Jesus said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. He did that first. Question, your kids, is their soul important? Are you caring for their souls as well? Or are only their bodies? You know, son, daughter, you know, get them new clothes, get them shoes, get them the right size. You know, um, 
buying food, um, fruits and vegetables, and you know, plenty of exercise. You know, maybe join a uh, group, uh, team sports, volleyball, basketball, bowling, whatever. Emphasizing all of these things about the body. And that's all good and fine. But what about the soul? Their soul. Son, do you know God loves you? Daughter, do you know Jesus has a plan for you? Do you know Jesus died for you? Are you caring for their soul as well? It's so important. And friends, are their souls important? So, yeah, I know you and I, we've been good friends a long time. Enjoy time together. But what's the best thing that's ever happened to me? Jesus. Jesus. Do you know Jesus? Is he in your heart? So I want you to know Jesus. I want you to know, I want you to have Jesus in your heart. I want my friend to go to heaven with me. I don't want you to go to hell. The soul is important, right? And the next thing Jesus did, because, I mean, he was not yet healed, right? This man, he's sick. And he told the man, I forgive your sin. So had he healed him yet? Not yet. What was the next thing he did? So Jesus is God, right? And Jesus knew everything before it happened. First of all, Jesus said, I forgive your sin. And the people watching heard him say that. And there were some scribes there, you know, like religious leaders. Uh, their, their responsibilities write down the law, right? So to copy the law and write it down. So they, they knew the law. They were really skilled at that. They knew it all the way. And they, they knew the truth. They knew that only God could forgive sins. They knew that. And these scribes were there, and they're watching Jesus, and they're like, ooh, this man speaks blasphemy. So remember, blasphemy it has two meanings. One is to talk against God, or the second one, is to say that they have the power of God. To say that they are God. So here in this verse, they're saying that Jesus did both. So I'm like, who can forgive sins but only God? So remember that these religious leaders were against Jesus. They were against God. And they, and they were blaming Jesus. And they're saying, you speak blasphemy. But Jesus is God. So Jesus can forgive sin. But these religious leaders didn't know it they're like well hang on a second who can forgive sin but God only they misunderstood 
and they doubted Jesus. And Jesus wanted to confront that. So first of all, he saw their faith and he praised them for it and he forgave this man's sin. And then the next thing he did was he addressed the doubt of the religious leaders. So here's the verse here. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their heart. That means like they were, they were like kind of talking to themselves in their head. They weren't speaking words out loud. They were just thinking some things in their heart. So remember, Jesus is God, right? And he knew what would happen. And so Jesus knew what was in their heart and knew what they were thinking. And they reasoned in their hearts, <clears throat> why doth this man thus speak blasphemes? Who can forgive sin but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived, that's like Jesus felt it, he knew it, He understood it in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? So imagine, Jesus, he saw these people, he saw their faith, and he said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And immediately... There was this group, and they're watching it. They're, they're like shocked. They're like, oh, only God can forgive sin. And immediately, Jesus said to them, why reason ye these things in your hearts? And these, these religious leaders are like, what? Wait, what? You, you talk to me? Yeah, no, not me. Me, I'm not talking to somebody. Me? I didn't say nothing. So imagine Jesus eye to eye with these people. So why are you thinking that? They were probably scared. Now, but I didn't say anything. And they're, they're like, how does Jesus know what we're thinking? Uh, so maybe they're really afraid and, you know, yes, yes, we are. So Jesus asked, why reason you these things in your hearts? And he said, which is easier to tell this man, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to tell him, rise up, take thy bed, and walk? Which, which one is easier? Which is, imagine these scribes over here thinking, um, hang on a second, trick question. What, you know, conference. Let's think, guys. What do you think? Which is easier for us? I mean, we can't do anything. I, I can't forgive sins, and I can't heal somebody. But for God, it's all easy. To forgive sin? Yes. To heal someone? Yes. And Jesus said, you know, they didn't answer. Jesus said um, to the man, he says, rise up, take thy bed, 
Well, go thy way. It happened. And once again, these scribes are looking on and they're shocked. So imagine, <clears throat> you know, it's sad when the heart is hard. Maybe it's not yourself, but maybe you can remember a time with your children, right? And they get all stubborn and puffed up at you. You say, you know, stop doing that. That's bad. It's going to hurt you. You see, it's quite clear to me that you keep doing that. You're going to get hurt. And the kid's all stubborn, says, nope, I'm going to be just fine. I'm going to be just fine. It's all right. I can do it. And they refuse to change their behavior. They refuse because of stubbornness, because of pride. But it's, it's clear that... I mean, you hope for them that they'll repent. But that's not usually the way it happens. Usually they just get mad. Why? It's a pride thing. So please be careful. Pride is such a bad thing. God is trying to work in your heart. And sometimes, you know, as we're reading the Bible, we read and, and bam, we get convicted about something in our lives. The Bible, you know, something that we're doing in our lives and the Bible, they're in conflict. So what's the right answer? We just say, oh, no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I mean, I, I get what you, God's word says, but, but I've got good reasons. I've got good, you know, I mean, because of my mom or because of my parents or because of my boyfriend or because of my girlfriend or my wife or whatever. I, I, I'm, I'm just fine. I've got this. I know I should be calm, but, but I'm mad. And, and, and we, we look at the Bible like, yeah, but, but, but. No, no, that's just pride. We need to agree with the Bible. Agree with God's word. Agree with God and say, yep, God's right. I'm wrong. Please forgive me. I'm wrong. Please help me. Please help me to humble myself, to repent, to change. Because God is right always. But this group of scribes, they refuse. And it's so sad to see it. So please notice Jesus first. He saw their faith and he, and, he, and he praised them for it. And secondly, he forgave, it, he forgave his sin because that's so important. But the souls of the people around him were important as well. And he saw their doubt and he called them out. And he said, hey, just to prove to you I am who I say I am. Yes, forgiven their sins and I'm going to heal them. And yet they still refused. Finally, lastly, the last thing that Jesus did was heal this man. And, and with his words, he spoke it, and the man rose up and walked. So do you have some kind of a problem? The Bible has the answer. Are you willing to accept it? Problems in your marriage. The Bible has the answer. People need to get saved. The Bible tells us that baptism can't save us. Good deeds can't save us. Even church attendance cannot save us. You yourself cannot save you. The Bible tells us that there is only one way for salvation, and that is trust in Jesus Christ for salvation. The Bible says that Jesus himself is God. 
So maybe you've got a friend that says, no, 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 Jesus is, is he's, he's a prophet, he's a teacher. He's just a man, but he's not God. No. Uh, they, they say, oh, Jesus is lower than God. God is lifted up, and Jesus is he's lower. He's like a, a little, little God. He's one of many gods. He's not the God. He's like little. No, no, no. The Bible says clearly that Jesus is God Almighty. So which is right? You, yourself, your opinions, or the Bible? The Bible says, how, how do we get saved? It's not through works. It's not through good deeds, not through baptism, not through going to church. It's through Jesus Christ and him alone. The Bible says, I'll have an appointment with death. And our lives are limited. We don't die and live and die and live and die and live. We, we, don't, we don't keep continually getting reincarnated into maybe a goat or a bug or a bird or something. No, there is this one life, one opportunity, for, and after that, the judgment. The Bible says... For the Christian, there is a special place called heaven, and for all others is a place called hell. There's not three places or three different levels of before you get, and there's no purgatory. That's not a real thing. There's only two places. For the Christian, for the believer, it's heaven. And for all others, all others, there is hell. There is no other place, no other way. The Bible says that salvation is forever. It's not something that you can lose. It's not a short-term thing. But many people believe, oh, well, you know, if I sin, if I did something bad, i got to get saved again. If, if you uh, accept Christ and become saved, yeah, that's fine, but then you fall away, you gotta get, you got to get saved again. If you commit adultery, then, you know, you got to get saved again. Or if you, you know, kill yourself, you lose your salvation. No, none of those things are true. Jesus gives us eternal life. The Bible says it's eternal life. So which is right? The Bible or the world's opinion, or your friend's opinion, or some religious system. You have a problem, who can help? Who's the best? Uh, Jesus. Who can heal? Jesus. Who can forgive? Jesus. Who is most wise? Jesus. So who should you ask first? Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. You are so wonderful. <clears throat> you love us so much. Your plan for us is the best. And you've written down these words for us and this story for us to learn from. Faith is so important for forgiveness, for salvation, for healing. Things that we can't explain, but it's clear with your response, and we just need to trust you. The soul is so important, more so than the body. Jesus forgave this man's sin first before healing him. And Jesus confronted others and their doubts before healing him. Please help us to remember, so important, the soul, salvation, 
And finally, Jesus healed him. That was the last thing that he did. So please help us to remember that you heal, that you forgive, that you save, that you do this. <clears throat> please help us to call on you early, immediately, and repeatedly for help, for salvation, to live a holy life, to make right decisions, for healing, for everything. As it's all quiet right now, think about yourselves. Are y'all saved? Do you have faith? Is your faith strong or is it small? Do you have, are you facing some problems? Do you need some help? So have you prayed about it? Are you trusting in Jesus for this? Are you reaching out to other people and, and, and feeling frustrated and discouraged? And then later calling on him. What do you do? <clears throat> so the soul is important. Yes? Are you caring for your soul? Are you caring for the souls of your children? Your friends? Your co-workers? Think about that. Pray now for yourself. Are, are there those of you who are not yet saved? Think about that. Where's your faith? You need to be trusting in Jesus 100% for salvation and be willing to accept the truth that Jesus himself is God. And the only way to be saved is by trusting in him. You can't get saved through baptism, going to church, or even doing wonderful things, taking communion. These things can't save you. But Jesus can, and he's the only way. He's the only one. Think about yourself, your decisions. If you're not yet saved, remember a time of getting saved. Please trust in Jesus Christ right now. Trust in him for salvation right now. I'm going to give you a minute right now. <clears throat> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can pray straight to you. For the Christian, what a wonderful gift and a wonderful opportunity that we can pray to you at any time, at any place, for anything. We can call on you. Please help us. Please give us wisdom, healing, strength. You give us support, comfort, so many things endless list <clears throat> that we can pray straight to you we can over and over and over again you never sleep you never neglect us you're never too busy for us everything is easy for you for those who are not yet saved I pray you'd work in their heart and help them to become saved today I pray, Lord, that they would not put this off. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.